Greetings YouTube! This is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001 bringing you the second part of Supersonic Boom 1996's Sad Am Commission Rotor the Walrus Now, as with Princess Sally, let's begin this with a brief story about the evolution of Rotor's character design. We were first introduced to Rotor in the Sad Am pilot where he was shown as the tool guy. I recall him eating a giant sandwich as well. But by the time the show proper had started, Rotor had a much more muted color scheme uh, in, uh, you know, blues instead of purples, and his bandolier had turned red. But he still played essentially the same role. Um, I do recall that when Series 2 started for series, I'm not British, season 2 started for Sat AM, Rotor had a significant change to his character design, including a red hat, gloves, and a completely different face with much more chin and, and a lot less nose. But his cameo appearance in the Sonic Spinball special stage was basically a massively deformed, chibified version of the pilot with the yellow hat bandolier and just look at that, he's like all head. That's just weird looking. Um, of course, Rotor lives on today in the comic book series, where his character design, besides drawing styles of the artist himself, was mostly just clothes and glasses every now and then. Although, he has ha suffered a back injury, which for a time kept him out of an active combat role, since he was unable to, to straighten up and use his, you know, strength, which is what a guy that size should be good for. Uh, that is why he teamed up with Nicole to create Iron Rotor. At least that's what the writers of the comic nicknamed him. Uh, basically, it's a nanite suit that provides corrective support for his back so that he can once again become an active fighter. Um, but when he's not wearing the suit, his character design has actually changed to be remarkably similar to the pilot version. Of course, his face looks a little bit more serious, but the color palette and including his bandolier, has pretty much gone back to the classics. It just goes to show, and with ev everything in Sonic seems to be going, you know, you create new by going back to the old. <laughs> That's just the story of our lives, isn't it? Okay, so let's go up to the figure now. So Rotor's made from an Eggman figure, which is kind of cool, because I thought that the only characters I would ever be able to make from Eggman were other Eggmen, like Eggman Nega, or the Robo Eggman, or something like that. So, yeah, totally different character. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Alright, so, um, as you can see, the arms and legs are plucked out, and the next thing to do was uh, take away the mustache and nose, uh, sand down all the buckles and things that make Eggman look like he's wearing a shirt, and uh, sculpt on a new belly in addition to covering up the sanded down remnants so that the figure wouldn't appear too rough. Then I can sculpt on the head. So although Eggman's head is still in there, the Rotors is still pretty much a scratch build since um, it, there's really extensive sculpt work and none of Eggman's head is still visible. Um, although I didn't take any work in progress shots because I was largely in the zone, the head is made pretty much in layers. First I made the lower lip and the whiskers on either side along with, you know, filling out the volume of the head. And then the tusks, um, muzzle and eyebrows all go on last so that they go on top of that. And of course since Rotor is mostly purple and beige, two colors that don't like to cover unless you use like five or six layers, I simply added a layer of primer so I could use much less paint. Um, that and a small tail means that the rotor weeble wobble is complete. <laughs> Let's give him some arms and legs. The arms didn't need that much modification except for removing the hand and building a new one. Uh, rotor has big flipper like hands so there isn't really a defined wrist plus his fingers are very long and claw like. Um, so a simple purple arm with darker purple fingers gives you Rotor's arm. It's not that complicated a job. The legs, on the other hand, require extensive modification. So as you've probably seen in all the concept art of Rotor, the way that walrus legs work in the Sonic universe is that they're always bent at the knee and he has very long, broad feet. Again, this makes them flipper-like. Um, so with Dr. Eggman's leg, 
what I basically had to do was cut off the foot along with the toes because I would need to sculpt, you know, the claws and reattach it at so that the um, the shin is pointing forwards at a 45 degree angle. Then it bends at the knee back 90 degree angles for the thigh where it rejoins into the, you know, the hips. But, you know, that I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, to make sure that this is as sturdy as possible, note that I cut a wedge into the foot and a point into the um, leg so that there is lots of surface area for the glue to stick. If you just put it on two flat surfaces, then you run the risk of it snapping off. Of course, that probably wouldn't be too much of a concern because I had to, you know, build the foot around it. And it has a lot of chunk and mass to it to be rotor's foot. Of course, when you look at it from the side, you can clearly see that the thigh is too long. So using the exact same technique I did in rotating Silver Sonic's thighs, I cut a little plug of plastic out from Eggman's leg and then reattached it to make it shorter. Uh, this, when, when the hip is directly above the heel, you know you've got it right. And so here is Naked Rotor. Uh, I know in the Sonic universe that doesn't really make a lot of difference, except that, uh, don't you kind of notice that Rotor is a little bit more naked than most? He's one of the few characters that wears neither gloves or shoes. I mean, I know a lot of Sad Ann characters don't wear gloves, but I think Rotor is the only one that goes without any foot clothes either. So let's give him his iconic outfit, shall we? Uh, the hat is, you know, just a scratch build. I made it out of clay, and it's a hat. I really don't have much to say about it except that hats are surprisingly hard to sculpt. Seriously, I wish I could have just found a toy the right size, but I was unable to. Oh well. Hat! The bandolier was a nifty little trick too. Um, I took a piece of tape and folded it over itself so that it wouldn't be sticky anymore, uh, thin enough that it would fit through that little slot between his whiskers and shoulder. I then slotted that through and glued it on at certain points so that it would have just a little bit of wiggle room like a belt would. And then on top of that, I put a bunch of little squares of foam board to make the panels on the bandolier. Did I say foam board? I meant craft foam, but I'm too tired to go back and change it. Um, so that is the rotor figure. Uh, he is taller than Sally and just a little bit shorter than Eggman which is the proper height for Rotor when you think about it. And, well, he's one of the core Sad AM characters. One of the, one of the original four, if you might say. You know, you know, besides Tails and Sonic himself. So, yes, this has been Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001. And I am signing out.